Welcome to Big Coke Church. This is Pastor Kim. We're glad to have you here out there in online land. And we are settling in today and we're settling into a new sermon series. And it should be very, very interesting. It's called Pillars of Faith. How do we approach our faith? How did the ancients approach their faith? And how does that come together for us in times of trouble, times of crisis? And so we're talking a little bit about our faith today and how that gets challenged. And so before we begin our worship service, we're going to have just a little bit of reflective music. Please share the call of worship with me. The sacrifice that honors God is a thankful heart. And our voices with praise for all that God has done. Wait upon the Lord who is our help and our shield. We trust in God's holy name. And so we come to worship. Please pray with me. God of all, we will learn today that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And we come convinced of many things, but trusting very few. Holy God of limitless surprises, meet us here. In this place, as we touch that which we cannot see, that which we have not dared to hope. Amen. Amen. 
And as our team gathers, um, you remember there's been a time during COVID when we had a lot of Zoom. Who had all the Zoom? Remember Zoom? Okay, we use it a lot. We still do, and our team can come up. They can come up and gather. And so we thought we'd just uh, remember some Zoom time and what it was like to be in Zoom, Zoom land. And so today we're going to be having a little Zoom time and thinking about how God can be in all things, but sometimes we don't let be God be in all things. Sometimes we separate ourselves from God just from simple worry and all that kind of stuff. And so um, anyway, I think I noticed, oh, they're all on Zoom. Hey, I'm glad they're on Zoom now. Super. <laughs> Give me a second. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. Getting there. How is everyone doing? Thanks for making the time for our monthly Zoom call. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for organizing it. Yes. Thank you. Glad it's on Sunday afternoon. It feels like the week has totally escaped us. Yeah, it's amazing how time flies by. Speaking of which, we heard your daughter had a baby. Yeah, she's a little girl. It's really hard waiting and not being anxious about the whole thing. We tried to give our worry to God, but we really hung on to it. It was like that when our son went to college, the worry that we felt was crazy. Yes, you'd think that we were hatching an egg the way we fussed. I guess it's a parent thing. You know, though, it made everything harder on us when we worried like that. Oh, yes, the worry is a huge stressor. And it certainly isn't just the moms who worry. As dads, we have our fair share of worry, too. I wonder why we hang on to our worry about our kids instead of giving it to God. I mean, I know that God is in charge, but truly, I feel like if I worry or fret about my kids, that somehow I'm more in control of the situation and bad things just won't happen to them. And we really have no control over their lives once they leave home. No, we sure don't. But we still worry. In our small group, we talked about worry as a thing that can actually separate us from God. By not giving our trust of our children over to God, it puts up a kind of a roadblock in our relationship to God. Somewhere in the book of Matthew, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And there's more. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That'll teach us. God is actually asking us to place our burdens on God's shoulder. I need to remember that the next time one of my kids is traveling in the car or taking a test or buying a house or having a baby. Yeah, it's not as easy as it sounds. Okay, let's make a pact. The next time one of us frets like a mother chicken over their clutch, let's reach out to each other and try to help each other Give over our worries to God instead of stewing on them. Don't let the chickens hear you say stewing. Who's? Who's? Okay, it's a deal, Gary. It's a deal. Our God is a very forgiving God. Okay, yes, a deal. Thanks, Gary. Okay, guys, we have to go now. It's chicken feeding time. Uh-oh, I forgot you had chickens. It's okay. I forgive you. <laughs>
after listening to our story, we can identify with what they've been going through. After hearing our song, we know that we are blessed by God no matter what. It gives the assurance that we are a new tomorrow in Christ. So now greet one another in the love and assurance of Christ. Greet one another. I will be reading from Genesis 15, 1 through 6, the message. After all these things, this word of God came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield. Your reward will be grand. Abram said, God, Master, what use are your gifts as long as I'm childless? And Eliezer of Damascus is going to inherit everything. Abram continued, See, you've given me no children, and now a mere house servant is going to get it all. Then God's message came. Don't worry, he won't be your heir. A son from your body will be your heir. Then he took him outside and said, Look at the sky. Count the stars. Can you do it? Count your descendants. You're going to have a big family, Abram. And he believed, believed God. God declared him set right with God. Next scripture comes from the book of Hebrews. I haven't spent much time in this scripture, so it was interesting to be digging into it. Pillars of faith, how faith acts. Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. More than that, really. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. And by faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in a land that he'd been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that had foundations, whose architect and builder was God. By faith, with Sarah's involvement, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born as many as the stars of heaven and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they left behind, they would have had opportunity to return, but as it is, they desire a better homeland, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. So I have a question for you. It's a good question. How is your faith these days? How is your faith? It's a good question. Everyone has times in their lives where faith in the things hoped for isn't all that rock solid. Tuesday morning, Ralph and I had the opportunity to visit with Andrea, the executive director of the care center of New Hope, and that's the small town next to us for those of you online who don't know where we are. The care center is a nonprofit that really tries to eradicate intergenerational poverty. Now, we got there first, and then Andrea came in a bit later, but when she walked in the door, I noticed that she was visibly upset, like something was troubling her. And I said, Andrea, like, what's going on? And she shared a story. And this story has now since been on the news. A young man named Hayden from New Hope was on a senior trip to Europe, and when he was in Italy, in the dark, on the beach, he fell 60 feet and was severely injured. I know, 60 feet. Bam. The Coast Guard had to rescue him because the land, they couldn't get to him by land. Hayden is now stuck in Italy. He has some rather serious injuries, and the Italian doctors will not release him unless an American doctor flies out to Italy to this local hospital and signs him out. And this is impossible. The British consulate has now become involved, and they're trying to assist in getting him released. It's almost like the boy's been sort of placed in house arrest. He's getting medical care, but he's unable to leave the country. His mother flew out to be with him as soon as she heard 
about his fall, and she's been advocating for his removal for over a week. He's receiving medical care, he is, but the care is inadequate and below the standard of the U.S. And they're all kind of worried that the more days he's in the rural hospital, the more he'll suffer from his injuries long term. And Andrea shared this story with us because she knows the mom really well and she was talking to her in Italy every day. And so she asked us to pray for Hayden and the situation, which of course we did. Two days later, on Thursday night, Andrea used her email list to spread the news that there would be a prayer vigil for Hayden in the town park of New Hope around the fountain. Now, Ralph and I don't know this family, but after hearing this story directly from Andrea and knowing how she was impacted and, and the community of New Hope, Ralph and I went to the prayer vigil. When we arrived about 10 minutes early, there were already about 50, 40, 50 people there gathered around the fountain in the center of this little small town. And then about 40 more people arrived, and then Hayden's stepfather spoke and gave them encouragement and thanked them. And then the woman who organized the prayer vigil started to pray. People prayed one by one in this gigantic circle. So many people prayed for this young man. It was heartwarming and beautiful. Now, no one knows what the outcome will be. No one knows if the British consulate nurse will, that's being sent will be enough. No one knows if Hayden will have permanent damage to his leg and to his foot by hanging out there. No one knows. But here they were, praying. So many people in prayer. They asked for healing. They asked for peace. They asked for safety. They asked for walls and barriers to be removed so that Hayden could get home. They asked for miracles and shared their gratitude. They can't see what will happen. They can't predict how much more time will pass. Each day brings uncertainty to this family's life. And as time continues to pass, will doubt set in? Will the people gathered around that fountain lose hope? Will they have the faith that it takes to continue to pursue God? doing and believing, both of these components are essential to our faith. Essential. By the time Abram had the conversation with God that we heard Melinda read today, Abram is struggling a bit with his faith. At 75 years old, Abraham has been called out of his own country and told by God to go to the promised land. And God promises him many offspring that he'll become the father of a great nation. Yet Abram has made some terrible mistakes where God had to rescue him. And then he's separated from his grandson due to infighting and then came a war. So much has happened to Abram since the first promise from God so much. So when Abram hears from God again, promising him many blessings, he questions it all. Abram said, God, master, what use are your blessings as long as I'm childless? Heirs are everything to the Hebrew people. And Abram has none. What use are your blessings, he says, when I have no children? The years continue with no heirs from Sarai, none. So she gives Abram a slave to bear a child with instead of her. God promised. He promised heirs. So they will make it happen. They've forgotten how to wait for the promise of God because they're tired and so much time has passed that their faith has become weakened. At that very moment, they might no longer believe in all the promises of God because it's taken so long to see them. It's taken a long time. Today, we also read from the book of Hebrews. And the letter to the book of Hebrews was originally attributed to Paul, but that has been refuted. And as it stands now, we really don't have any idea who wrote this letter, but we know that it was written to a Gentile and Hebrew audience and that this audience endured persecution, abuse and suffering. The people from the letter are unsure about their faith. They're in danger of renouncing their faith and neglecting their faith community that involved in, or frankly, they're just going to walk away. So this letter comes in a time when there's a faith crisis and the author's trying to help them. The book of Hebrew scripture, men of God in days of old were famous for their faith. Yet we also heard today that even for Abram and many others, the journey in a faith where promises and blessings are unseen is really difficult. Relying on the promises of God can be hard. It not only takes the will of our hearts, 
but the will of our minds to believe. And the scripture we hear that men like Abram didn't even get to see the fulfillment of the promises to them made by God because they died before they saw the promises. The letter of Hebrews addresses their steadfast faith but neglects to discuss the challenges that these men faced on their journey in faith. We hear from the author that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. If we place it in simpler language, we hear this. What is faith? It's the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is a certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. Even though we cannot see it up ahead, like the route home from Italy for Hayden and his continued care and recovery, or how Abram struggled with his faith when he couldn't see the blessings in front of him. The people gathered at the fountain in the center of New Hope might struggle with their conviction that God will safely get Hayden home when the end product takes too long. Yet we're continually told in the scripture, including the book of Hebrews chapter 11, that there are so many saints of the faith that held on during their time of trial. Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Joseph, Moses, all of these people, wonderfully convicted in their faith. I agree. But this scripture in the book of Hebrews skips over the hard times for these saints. There were times of faith crisis, of faith being hard, of having faith in things unseen, of promises unmet, of belief in something so intangible can be difficult. I think we need to acknowledge that. We need to acknowledge that sometimes faith is hard. To find your hope and your faith to continue to hope can be hard. Let's take a moment together. Let's call out some ways when our faith might be challenged. When might our faith or our belief be challenged? What circumstances? Say it again. When we're sick. Oh, yes. Sure. Yes death of a loved one, financial setback, sure, cancer, absolutely, yeah, when a friend does you wrong, oh, yeah. sure, it's a bad feeling, yeah, uh-huh, as Gary said, Oh, yes, when they're in Africa, right, travels. Yeah. You being worried to death, yes, of course. But it is. It, that's good, because you're getting reassurance. But without reassurance, like Hayden, it's really hard, right, to keep that hope alive, not knowing what's going to happen. Separations in family. Oh, don't you? Oh, sure, we can take care of it. That's right. It, it just you, you, you try to give it up and you give it back. Well, Linda said that, didn't she? You know, we, we want to give our kids to God, but oh, man, it's so hard. And it makes us feel more in control of our children, particularly when we don't give that up because we're thinking we can take care of them, right? Even if they're in Africa. I mean, it, it's, it's a little bit crazy, but definitely it is harder to keep your faith strong when this happens. And when I hear all those things, I wonder if having faith might not only be just a spiritual discipline, but also a cognitive choice, a choice that God is faithful, a mind over matter to choose the assurance of things hoped for, a choice to believe. A choice to believe that God's in charge. A choice to believe to have trust that we have promise and fulfillment of those promises through God to continue to have hope. Yet we've just acknowledged that keeping our faith can sometimes be really hard. Particularly when time passes and the hopes and dreams and prayers aren't fulfilled. So how do we keep ourselves connected to our faith and keep it strong when we might feel disconnected or when things are hard, or even just stagnant. I have some suggestions for you on the screen today. First, come together. 
come together. The people in New Hope came together to support one another, to support Hayden's family and to pray. Friends, we need to eat together, share together, study together, place our burdens with each other, come together. That's the first thing, keeping our faith strong. Number two, dig into the word, dig into the Bible. And people sometimes ask me, but pastor, where do I start? Like it's a big book, right? Well, when I'm troubled or worried, I go back in my heart to simpler times. When well, my parents or my aunt or my uncle would say, let me tell you a story, right? So if you want to dig into the Bible and you don't really know where to start, I would direct you to the book of Luke. It's the longest book in the New Testament, but it's filled with beautiful imagery and poetry and story, lots of stories. It starts with the birth of Jesus and goes right beyond the death of Jesus and resurrection and promises. And there are parables, stories within stories, and miracles. Start with Luke. There are many lessons that are applicable to today's world in the gospel account of Jesus, and this particular one. Prayer. Make room in your life for prayer. Be in prayer. Talk to God. In the shower, in the car, at bedtime, at rising, when you're gardening, when you're walking, all the time. Talk to God. All the time. Prayer isn't just for at mealtimes and at bedtimes. Prayer is the way we live our lives. We give ourselves to God in daily prayer as we breathe. God knows you intimately, and God wants to hear your voice. Live with a grateful heart. Let me tell you, it is so much easier to have your faith fulfilled, to have your faith strong, to feel the blessings of God than to survive even this chaotic world. When we have a grateful heart, when you wake up in the morning and say, I'm glad I'm here. Thank you, Lord. I'm here. And sometimes when those days are hard because you're in pain or you're feeling sad or you're feeling a loss, sometimes those are the hardest times to feel grateful. And so pick small things, teeny things. I'm so glad my coffee was warm this morning. Oh, I'm so glad the, cre the creamer in the, in the pantry didn't spoil. You know, I can have coffee with my creamer. The flowers look absolutely beautiful today. As I'm sitting on my porch, I can hear the birds sing. Wow, that's amazing. Simple, small things to be grateful for enhance and help us to grow our faith. And the fifth and final one, ask questions with the faith of a child. From Friar Mike, Maybe faith is the willingness to show up and live with uncertainty in an ever-changing world. What if faith isn't about having or even needing to have the answers, but about asking better questions, deeper questions that help us discover meaning and live more wholeheartedly? Friends, we do have to live into an understanding that we don't understand. How do you live into an understanding that we don't understand God? Right? Ask questions of the faith of a child. Allow yourself permission to doubt and to explore and to question your faith. God is big enough to handle it. After all, he handled all those ancients who had issues with their faith. He can handle ours. The circle of faith. The circle of faith-filled people that surrounded Hayden's family last week was a tribute to their trust in God by standing together in solidarity with this family and praying for healing, deliverance, and miracles, they open themselves up to hope. You see, friends, our faith lets us, lets us lay hold of the promises of God. It involves our own will, our choice to trust, and a knowledge that God is faithful. So as we live into our week with our exercises that we just went over, to strengthen our faith, let us recognize and accept through this scripture, Hebrews 1, 11, 3. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen is made from things that are not visible. The word of the Lord. Today we'll be um, collecting some prayers from you at home please type in pastor.bigcovechurch at gmail.com. If you have a prayer to share, we'd love you to be part of this family. And also, um, 
we have collected some prayers in here and quite a few heartfelt prayers. And we are praying for uh, a young family in town, and you'll be hearing about that. But I would just really like to um, lift up a whole bunch of things to God, and then everybody can join us with all those names so God hears a cacophony of all your voices. Let us pray. God, we know that there are times in our lives when we feel challenged uh, with our faith. Not necessarily that we would give up our faith or lose faith, God, but that it's hard to see around the corner. When you're hoping for things that are unseen, it is so difficult. We could wait years and years for unfulfilled promises. And sometimes your ways are not our ways and we don't understand them. It's hard to have acceptance. And that's part of faith, is living into the belief of things that are unseen and unspoken. We ask that you strengthen us and help us to remember the ways in which we can continually live into our faith and practice our faith through being coming together and through prayer and through questioning and through doubt even, God. So many ways that we have ability to dig into your word to be able to strengthen our faith. Remind us, God. Help us to be in constant prayer with you so that you remind us on how to keep steadfast even when the journey gets rugged or we can't see around the corner and we'd like to. We have several people to lift up today, Lord, um, several people. And I'm going to just first lift up a child with cancer and their mom. A child is at St. Jude, God, and we... We lift them to you because we know you are the great healer and great provider. And we have all hope in that healing of this small child who's just three years old, Lord. And aggressive cancers are so frightening. We ask that you be with the parents during this time and how difficult it is. At the same time as a child that has cancer, another child has been born. And we ask you to be with the parents as they continue to nurture this little new baby and all the trials that that happens with that. And how amazing it can be. And we lift up celebrations of anniversaries and birthdays and all the joyous events that can happen in our lives and help us as we are a witness to these events to continue to hold a grateful heart to you, O oh God. A grateful heart that reminds us that you are ever present in our lives. Today we lift up Judy and Hayden and Maddie and Ella Mae and Jimmy, and Dora, and Hartwell, and Tom, and Diane, and Danielle, and Joe, and DJ, and Sheila, and Shirley, and Ann, and Ray, and David, and Jim, and Billy, and Randy, and Elena, and Grayson, and David, and Kevin, and Connie. We also lift up our pianist, O oh Lord, who um, has had to move on to other things. She'll be back here, as you know, God, for one final time. But we lift up their entire family to you as um, Josiah has been looking for a job, O oh God, to be able to serve because he's just graduated from seminary and he needs a job to serve you. But if they want to keep their family here for a little while longer, He's only going to be able to take a part-time job, and so our beloved Sarah will have to move on, and we want you to just envelope that family in care because they need you, God. They need you in this journey that they're experiencing. So we lift up the entire Ruff family to you as well. God, you have done so much for us in so many ways, and we are grateful, and you've even given us a prayer to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Faith is an interesting thing. It requires a whole lot of trust. This is the time in our worship service where we give God our trust by dedicating our lives and our finances back to God. And sometimes that isn't easy, so we take a risk and we try. For you at home, 
If you feel led to become a part of Big Cove Church by taking part in our church family's time of giving back, you can go to our website at www.bigcovechurch.org and click on our contribute button. Now let us share our gifts with the Lord. Please pray with me. Living God, give us faith to be sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see, to believe that you are there. We know that you reward those who truly seek you. With these gifts, may we please you and deliver them to the hands that need them most. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. So friends, I'm going to quiz you before I leave. What were the five practices that we're going to do this week and for the next month to help us keep our faith? What were they? Prayer. Come together. Be grateful. Read the Bible. Grateful. We said prayer. I know what it is. Okay, I'm going to give you a hint. Child. Be a child in your faith, right? Question, it's okay to question, right? Those are the five things we're going to be doing, okay? And go now knowing that God loves you. And you hold the spirit of God inside you. So wherever you go, friend, shine that spirit. Shine the light. Amen. <laughs>